platform to reckon with showcasing the best of ideas and business solutions this show started with a very modest background to offer opportunities to entrepreneurs uh, but now has actually emerged as the largest business show of the country uh, this show not only brings in opportunities across india but this time around we had 14 different countries coming over which would offer their uh, opportunities in franchise distribution uh, marketing associates and so on so Franchise India 2016 hosted the 14th International Franchise and Retail Show in the National Capital. Very very warm welcome to Franchise India 2016. It is indeed today one of the biggest show which is on retail on consumer businesses but I think the reason why it has become bigger and better every year is because you have come back and supported it every year. So thank you very much for joining us over here today and this applause is really for all of you. for making small business the biggest industry in india an ideal forum for networking more than 1700 brands came together for sharing ideas best practices and business opportunity opportunities is the biggest thing that a young person requires if a young person has the passion to work hard and to um, to put in to have and have perseverance to 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 pursue their dreams i think that this uh, the franchise india startup uh, um, it gives them a huge platform which is incredible for me associating with them is not about just being a brand ambassador as an actress it's also uh, playing a very important role with them in bringing about this whole fitness revolution in india which is not just for a certain age of people but also for children for women for men anyone who wants to be fit should be allowed to be fit ritu maria editor in chief of franchise media kick started the two day event with her welcome address I've been a great fan of our Prime Minister, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, and I quite like um, you know his initiatives that he has done, which is Start Up India, Make in India, and I think these initiatives are game changing. They are absolutely brilliantly uh, contemplated, executed, and they would bring a large change in this the thinking culture that India has for entrepreneurship. I think a lot of uh, ideas which were only there in hidden in the garage somewhere tinkered with would really come out in the open but overall they would give an equal opportunity to every indian to become an entrepreneur and i think that is a very big thought but you know at the same time while i really like this i also thought that if somebody was to walk to the prime minister or to the prime minister's office and ask him that i have 30 lakh rupees with me and i want to start a small business and i want to know some ideas and something that could give me the right return i can tell you ladies and gentlemen even prime minister would not have an answer for him that's because you know they, they the small business culture in india is very large and to put it into one fulfilling model is very difficult and i think that is what we at franchise india 2016 and franchise india as an organization stand for is to bring all that small business world together and i think that is a big thought and that is where you know this thought came to us which was opportunity india year on year people come back here hungry and thirsty looking for opportunities opportunities which will give them the reason to start a small and a stable business which would give them the right return on investment that they are looking at so the show has been themed opportunity india idea for tomorrow making it a larger thought that we are going to carry forward over the years because i think no matter what the trends are no matter which industry grows big or gets saturated but people will always continue to be hungry for opportunity and they would come and seek opportunity at this show and that is what we are going to stand for for the next 14 years also so ladies and gentlemen i extend you once again a very very warm welcome to franchise india 2016 and i hope that at the end of the two days we have done some bit of our work in helping you start the right enterprise welcome once again the 
Expo started with a big bang with ace shooter Abhinav Bindra sharing his life experiences with the audience, giving them a peek into the life of a sportsman. Firstly, I'd like to welcome uh, Mr. Abhinav Bindra here today. I think um, for everything that we can thank you for getting us uh, the Olympic gold medal, I'd personally like to thank you for something much more, which is to introduce sports to this country. We've never really known anything beyond cricket till a few years, till you actually made us open our eyes to sports. As, as an editor, I'm always curious to know more about people, and I think Abhinav Bindra has certainly you know, made us all think as Indians what we are probably not doing enough. And with sports and business being so akin to each other, I think we'd really like to take his, your mind, uh, Abhinav, to understand your journey and also how you know, sports and what sports can teach a business owner? Well, it started with a very, very small thought. Um, I started when I was uh, maybe 12 years old, and at that uh, time in my life, I hated sport. Uh, I hated a, any kind of physical activity. But my father always ins um, you know, inspired me to pick up some sport. He always pushed me towards sport. So one day, um, and at that time, I was really fat. So I was an overweight kid. and. Um, at age 12 or 13, I tried a lot of sports, but you know, I hated, I hated all of them until uh, I was introduced to a shooting coach. So I went shooting the first day and to succeed in shooting, you had to stand still and you not move. So that was uh, the first reason why I, why I actually got into, into the sport of shooting. But after that, of course, uh, you know, I went to it. I liked what, what it was all about. And um, it, that gave birth to, or to a passionate dream. I wanted to go to the Olympic Games. I saw the Olympic Games on television for the first time in 92, for the first time, and then more uh, clearly in 1996, and the whole Olympic movement really inspired me. And uh, although as a 13-year-old, um, I set a goal to win an Olympic gold medal. It was an unrealistic goal at that moment, but uh, I was passionate about it. I was driven about it. Yeah, that's, that was the start. You know, you're completely right. Uh, sometimes even as entrepreneurs, we set goals which are unrealistic. But when we go out to achieve them, that's how it happens. We get somewhere with them. So, you know, there's a lot of learning for us as entrepreneurs from your journey. Now, interestingly, while um, Abhinav, you went into a sport, but you come from a family of business people. Uh, your father is a businessman. And uh, today you have, uh, when you've been due to uh, shooting as a professional sport, and you want to be an entrepreneur, what similarities do you see between sport and business? I think the biggest similarity is that there is only one guarantee, and that guarantee is there's no guarantee for any success. Um, <laughs> that's the bottom line. But uh, end of the day, I think in both worlds, you have to try and put processes in place. You have to follow a path. You have to put structures in place which would enhance your chances to succeed. That's what I try to do in the world of sport, and that's what I try to do in my daily work and in, in business, and I think it's pretty similar because, you know, you, know, you need to put the right... Uh, teams in place, you need to put the right people on the right uh, places, and you need to have the right process, and you need to believe in that process, you need to monitor that process, try and uh, improve that process, but at the end of the day, you have to remain committed to that process and to a certain structure. I think structure is something which is very, very important to, to anything, and I think that to me brings, that is the biggest similarity between high performance in sport and in business. I think um, I led a very regimented life in, in the world of sport, but it had a lot of structure. It had a lot of structure which required also a lot of flexibility because, you know, things keep changing and you, it's a dynamic process. And that is something uh, very similar in, in business because, you, you know, you face challenges, you have prob uh, unforeseen scenarios that come into play which uh, you haven't foreseen, uh, and you have to, to try and solve them. Covering a varied range of topics this time, the next session focused on unlocking the power of brand licensing. So when we talk about uh, any retail strategy, or uh, our prime focus is the target audience. And these days, uh, the super consumers or the millennial youth is actually the catalyst that is driving the retail industry in India. So, uh, Mr. Bharat, I would want to know from your experience that how to cater this uh, new, uh, new upcoming uh, consumer base, which is quite unpredictable at this time. Well, actually, the total 
you know, the total mechanics of buying with the Gen Y has shifted from a very considered decision mm -hmm. to an impulse buy. Mm -hmm. I think this is because the uh, disposable incomes in the hands of the consumer or, or that gentleman is much more than what used to be, let's say, when I was young or when my, when my parents were young. Uh, Mr. Saxena, uh, what kind of strategies should be made to actually cater to that Gen Y, to ma make them buy the products? So I think the foremost thing in this uh, understanding of the new consumers, uh, with the new media, with new money, with new access to channels, you know, and the new energy to shop. Okay, uh, the biggest change which has happened now is the content actually. And most of the young consumers today, they have real-time awareness of international brands. The idea of brand in any case is quite an alien idea to most of the Indian entrepreneurs and now they are realizing the power of brands. Now they are realizing how creating branded business is so important. So I think what is critical for us is to now start investing in the brand. And B, I think the success of the, whether it's an international brand or Indian brand is a very short-term phenomenon. You are as successful as your last season sales these days. So, uh, Mr. Jain, your kind of consumers are very different from the uh, rest of them. So, how do you aim to uh, cater to that crowd? We focus on having fun. Mm -hmm. I think because uh, the category where uh, we uh, cater to is kids. And to begin with, we need to start thinking like kids. We ourselves have to be, become kids. And somewhere uh, that reflects on the thinking of, of the designers, of the merchandisers, of the creative people. It's more of a creative environment. The need of the uh, consumers, brands are actually innovating themselves. We're actually explore, uh, exploring some real categories. Uh, paper products are a trend. Then uh, hybrid licensing has uh, suddenly become a trend these days. So, uh, Mr. Jain, would you like to uh, share your uh, experiences of hybrid licensing? In kids category, what uh, what we see now uh, DIY, you know, uh, arts and crafts. Mm -hmm. uh, these are certain categories uh, which uh, have a have a booming demand, and licensing uh, these categories. Nobody, you know, it was not a very uh, common thing. With the help of licensing, exploring DIY uh, as a category uh, was a new thing and it has, it has worked very well. Licensing essentially doesn't mean uh, making a product. It also uh, means that you, you got to uh, bring in edutainment, you can bring in a lot of uh, activities uh, where you educate the child, who, where you enhance his skill set. In a country where one of the most prominent IPR recently talked about was Indian yoga, you know. And in the idea, the IPR of yoga is, there is no royalties India as a country is earning, while we have licensed out the idea of yoga to the world. And culturally, in, in our, uh, you know, for historic reasons, in our country, we have been saying that the knowledge increases with sharing. So we are not used to guarding our knowledge. And therefore, most of Indians are very poor in guarding their own ideas. And now I'll come to the next point of creativity and imagination. So in India, it is very common to think of an idea, share with a friend or a colleague, and then move on and allow him to develop the idea and without owning it. So the foremost thing I think in our country we need to do is to think of ideas, mm -hmm. which is important of course, but then protect your ideas. On the other side of the break, we get you the prestigious Franchise India Awards 2016. Franchise India 2016 promised to be bigger and better. We are participating in Franchise India for last uh, five years. This is our fifth participation. And every time we are uh, getting more and more people visiting our stall. And we are uh, highly excited uh, about this year's results. 
We're working with uh, Franchise India and their um, partner company Knockout who have been really fantastic to us and with us and are working with us and helping us move this pan India uh, you know, with good partners of franchisees. Uh, we want franchisees who are passionate about this concept, uh, who love fitness and understand how important it is to get India fit. A showcase of exciting global master franchise prospects. The next session highlighted the parameters and opportunity assessment in a master franchise. Now I'm here today to talk about I Can Read. Now what is I Can Read? We are in the education space. Over the last 16 years, I Can Read has trained over 170,000 students. Singapore, we are the market leader where we have 24 learning centres, small in comparison to India, obviously. Um, however, in that 24 centres, we have more than 12,000 students. Regionally, across uh, the markets that we operate, primarily in Thailand, Indonesia, Vietnam, uh, Malaysia, uh, including Singapore, and we are launching Hong Kong, in fact, next week, and China next month. We should be expecting 20 over 1,000 students once all these markets uh, come online. Specifically in India, we are looking for area franchise partner. An area franchise partner would be committed to open at least 10 I Can Read centres with us. We will provide the infrastructure, the training, the branding, curriculum, and importantly, teacher recruitment and teacher training, marketing support. So in short, that is what we would uh, be offering as a brand owner and as the master franchise, franchisor for the brand. All right, thank you very much. Let me just share with you um, uh, what we're doing. H2O Mineral Plus is a Singapore brand. And we take this brand from Singapore and we do different things with water. In our group, we have multiple companies. Uh, we have uh, business in retails, business in water refilling station. Uh, you think about it, water refilling station, think, just think about uh, petrol refilling station. Okay? And uh, H2O Life Source and uh, our brand is a proud member of um, Philippine Franchise Association, Singapore Franchise and Licensing Association. And in a nutshell, what I wanted to share with you about this uh, water refilling station opportunity is that it is a, something that gives you, that you can have a small investment but give you a huge return, all right? Because most of the water-related uh, uh, what do you call the, the, those uh, different water bottling plant opportunity in, the India, in India, is that the investment are quite big, usually in the range of 50, 60,000 US dollars all the way to 100,000 dollars to have any decent water plant in India. And what we are talking here is that something in the range of 7,500 US dollar to 17,500 US dollar, you can have a capacity and the scale of operation that is similar to what I talk about, about 50 to 100,000 dollars in water plant. All right, so we have an excellent opportunity of small investment but give you big return. And we are also looking for area franchisee in this case. <laughs> best restaurants coffee table book has put Indian cuisine on the plate and is the most comprehensive guide to India's best restaurants uh, ladies and gentlemen full power for the official unveiling of the coffee table book Woo! Let's make some noise, guys. Come on. the two-day expo culminated into a gala award ceremony along with the unveiling of the coffee table book on your favourite cuisines and restaurants. I would like to extend a very warm welcome to all our guests to the Franchise and Star Retailer Awards Night 2016. And the award goes to Science and Sales Academy. 
an evening of glitz and glamour that celebrated and awarded the best in franchising and retail. The Franchise India 2016 Awards. To begin with, we would like to welcome on stage the most promising franchise opportunity of the year. Please welcome the Cricket Academy of Patans. Earn the cap. Woo! Give it up for his one Patan, please. Franchise of the Year Automotive, and it goes to Mahindra First Choice Wheels Limited to provide complete ecosystem to the used car customers. Let us welcome the Franchiser of the Year in Fast Casual Dining, and the award goes to Roster Chicken. Franchiser of the Year, K-12 category. Please give it up for St. M.R. Jaipulia School, where every child is a winner. We're moving into the Franchiser of the Year, car detailing and servicing. Please give it up for 3M Car Care. Keep your car looking new. Our next winner on stage, Concept of the Year Award, and the award goes to Times and Trends Academy, Building Careers, Building the Nation. Well, moving into the next award category, the Emerging Franchiser of the Year. Please give it up for Sanford, where learning begins. Congratulations! Sir, I think we can even call that team on stage. Yeah, what a high energy team, yeah. Please, please come all of you on stage. What a high energy team. Give it up for them, what energy. On the world, the uh, Mr. Prajot Ranjan, co founder EuroKids. for the Lifetime Achievement Award. This is going to be the big one. So ladies and gentlemen, do give her a big round of applause. The chairperson, Deepa, Miss Nina Bindra. Woo! Awards are very special for us. I mean, this is the first recognition this industry got. I mean, we got Franchising was instrumental in bringing this industry as industry status. And then we started recognizing the uh, people who did well. And especially it, uh, the awards also play a very important reason because these companies then can go confidently to their investors and tell that they stand for a quality delivery. So this year also uh, recognized some uh, uh, companies which have already been doing a great job for many years, companies like Titan and likes of them. But also we saw a lot of new faces and new uh, brands which are doing new, uh, new businesses, especially in the emerging economy. A lot of technology companies, a lot of uh, supply companies and so on and so forth. So net net both franchise and retail awards in the 14th year looked very, very promising with very promising concepts. <laughs>